bring in uh, CNBC contributor Bryn Talkington of Requisite Capital Management and Eugene Profit of Profit Investments uh, to sort of round out this debate a little bit. Bryn, um, you know, I, I wonder if we if we imagine that the market did not go down to those lows from January to June and the market went from early January 4,800 on the S&P to where it is right now. It's about 10 percent down. You might consider ourselves lucky, right? I mean, the Fed did what it did in terms of really getting hawkish and, and raising rates a lot. You got the 10-year yield ramping. Uh, everything that we've seen in terms of a, a flattening out of profit growth uh, and some struggle with, uh, with gasoline prices, that would seem to leave us in a pretty uh, favorable spot being just down 10 percent. So with that thought experiment in mind, would you be uh, happy to be selling 10 percent down? Would you say that uh, that's a that's a correction I'd want to buy? I'm just wondering how we can view the spot we're in from a different angle. Yeah, I mean, if only we could just close the doors on those down days and just pretend they didn't exist, uh, we would all be better investors. I think where we are right now, I mean, Joe hit it on on it so so well, is, is we're at that 200-day, right? So that's definitely a crossroads. And you want to see, I mean, if we can break above that, that's clearly incredibly bullish. I will say, though, this market has been so re resilient. You know, er as we're coming to a close on earnings, you know, earnings are going to beat by, I think, a median of about 7%. So to your point, this market has been strong. Earnings have still been strong. But, and there's a big but, the Fed balance sheet hasn't budged. I mean, in, I just looked before the show. In March, it was around $8.4 trillion. It's still around $8.4 trillion. And so to me, the one, one aspect that gives me a great deal of pause in this market is the Fed and the market moving forward gives the Fed cover to continue to raise rates. And also we have QT starting in just a matter of weeks. Because you have to remember, there has never been, and this could be a first, there has never been a time when the Fed has stopped a tightening cycle when CPI is above Fed funds. And so whether CPI is at eight and a half, eight, seven, it's still really far away. So I think that investors just saying all clear signal, I think you should still expect a lot more volatility. Uh, Eugene, um, clearly that's something that has to be on investors' minds, the idea that there is a lagged effect of the tightening that's already happened, and, and for sure the balance sheet is going to start to shrink at an accelerated rate before too long. Also, I, I've been pointing out, you know, the 10-year Treasury yields back above 2.8%. This stock market hasn't done all that well absorbing a, let's say, 3 percent 10-year Treasury yield. Not to say that's the be-all, but it's something to keep in mind. So how would you be approaching the levels we're at right now relative to where the economy is situated? Um, as a fundamental investor, um, it's been very important to stick to your knitting and basically close your doors on those down days and believe in your valuation analysis. And I think that goes um, counter to um, technical analysis, which basically says buy the dips at this point in time. I think you can buy the dips. However, um, if we look at earnings from a fundamental standpoint, one, the 4P is still elevated. Um, as Brent said, um, we probably are still going a little bit higher in interest rates. And most importantly to me, um, yes, the consumer has been strong, but if you look at earnings like Walmart or Home Depot, um, the revenue's higher because they've been able to pass on the price increases to consumers. However, consumers are beginning to trade down um, in products and margins are getting a little bit squoze. So um, while I would be, I'm very happy that we're only down 10% to your previous question, um, this market environment, but um, I still think that um, we're being very optimistic and investors are trying very hard to anticipate an all clear and um, beat the Fed to the punch and assume that interest rate increases are going to stop and we're going to have a very soft landing. I think that's the biggest yeah. risk, that the consumer is strong but may slow down. Sure. Now, I mean, the market has been known to get impatient about trying to uh, anticipate a turn uh, at times, Eugene. But I guess on a practical basis, what does that mean, that you would therefore take this 17 18 percent rally as a chance to rotate away, reduce exposure, uh, maybe pick something more defensive, or is it just about setting expectations? Well, I think it's sticking to your to your expectations and your philosophy and discipline. I mean, case in point, um, FUBU TV um, was 35 at its high over the last 52 weeks. Um, it's up 76 percent in a month, up 44 percent, you know, basically today. Would love to have the mean stock today. However, you would still be down quite a bit unless you were smart enough to get out at 35 and get back in at two. 
Um, and I think that a lot of uh, interest in FUBU comes as a result of Walmart talking about its streaming business with Walmart Plus, what happened with Disney. So I think you can take this environment and stick to larger companies that are executing very well throughout the time period. You don't have to try to whipsaw yourself back and forth unless you are a daily trader, right? If you're a long-term investor with the discipline that you can stick to, I think you're safer staying the course and basically um, letting the Fed do its work and not get overly optimistic on days that look like today.